Hey guys, welcome to Andy's Gaming and welcome back to Alune. And there's been a lot of information put out recently with the new Karu uh, Legendary Support Hero release. Um, particularly around the new heroes that are also going to be released later this month as well as early next month in October. Um, but a lot of information and a lot of roadmap items as well, which is really interesting to see because at the beginning of this journey with Loon. Um, we talked a little bit about what Gameville might do, in particular around the pace at which they're releasing content into the game. And I made a few comments which I thought were pretty reasonable at the time around the fact that the, the um, product managers themselves need to be careful at Gameville because um, they'll create such a pace expectation from the community um, if they continue down that path that it will um, almost burn the game out. Um, before really it's had enough uh, time to sort of cement itself with the community of players. And we're sort of starting to see that happening with actually a bit of the feedback that's happened around some of the announcements about release schedule um, and timeframes for new builds. But before I go into that, let's just quickly have a look at some of the new things that are coming. Um, a quick summary, we're obviously going to get some new legendary heroes from the Astoria dimension which um, is really cool and great to see. And I think Trent there is possibly the pre-corrupted Sage version of the um, of the boss that we have in the game currently, um, Trent. And, uh, and we're also getting a new tank type character in Rachel, um, which we've got a sneak peek video of her ultimate skill and a few other things. Unfortunately, Karu's got released, but we don't know too much about what the other healers, um, the other healers, the other characters are going to bring. Trent, particularly being a healer, and Rachel a tank, so it's really hard to know whether I should be saving up those rubies for other banners um, rather than trying to go for Karu uh, while Karu is on the raid up. But um, in any case, it's really really cool bringing some new legendaries into the game. Um, and hopefully they'll sort of work their way through the different dimensions and maybe release some new ones as well, which will be really interesting um, and keeps the whole kind of thing moving along nicely. Um, so how are we going with the fall event? I think we're going very well. I myself have really loved the fact that there's been a lot of rewards, um, everything from the extra three summons a day in the terms of the tickets that are coming in for just playing the game. Um, right through to all the seed drops, the roulette wheel, the extra class seeds. That's all made a big difference to my game, which is really great. Not so much too concerned about what they're talking about with the combat potions. Um, I've made use of it only very minimally. It's kind of, you know, mostly um, upgraded uh, a few of the potion types, but not really used them in, in anger um, on a daily basis. Um... In terms of the plans for second half of 2019, what do I think of those? Um, so going back to what I was saying, the one main build and up, uh, build update a month is quite a good one to sort of set the expectation that we shouldn't be getting any kind of major, major uh, app release updates um, more frequently than once a month, which I think is a really good thing. Um, at the most, we're looking at seeing sort of weekly basis sort of patches released hopefully fixing bugs mostly um, but talking about also providing more events and content I wouldn't imagine that that content would be a great um, of great difference to what's already in the game probably just continuing to um, add more events and much the same types of things that we've already seen before with the monthly build really introducing the major major updates now Having some sort of feedback from that, uh, you know, after having to clarify, it just goes to show that the community itself is so now used to having this frequent content release, um, having a big insight into the constant uh, roadmap development of the game itself. And uh, that's quite evident that, you know, as we sort of slow, see Gameville slowing down the content, so we've kind of, you know, made some adjustments to existing content mainly, Obviously, bringing all this content out as well has shown that some of the content, particularly Alliance Boss and Alliance Battle, is not really being picked up that quickly. Um, and I think that's attributed to a couple of things. One, I think players are still trying to get through the content that was released prior um, to that. But 
also, you know, there's more lucrative things to do on a daily basis. And that's really what's driving when you've got so much content in the game um, and things to do and not necessarily an entire day to do it in terms of free, free time. You have to sort of be discerning about what it is that you do. So setting that expectation, though, has, you know, has really um, has sort of set them up for having to kind of slowly and gently let us down in terms of what new content's being released, even if we don't use it. So, and we're kind of seeing that. And the main thing that we're seeing around that in particular that I can see, um, and my thing's totally bugging out, um, the main thing that we're seeing is the fact that they're actually showcasing um, roadmap items well out, you know, in terms of months and months and months. So if we, if I can actually get it to show up, so we've got the current content, uh, the current roadmap update around the die system and that sort of thing, which is cool. So there's some more information on that. Um, it's a nice, unique kind of feature as well. Um, and it will give a lot of customization, which is really cool. Um, it's always good to be able to do sort of some interesting things with how your team looks. Um, but probably not really going to add much to the actual content completion outside of um, outside of just, you know, some aesthetic choice differences. Um, and we've got some air battle practice, uh, which, which I think is really cool, being able to test out different teams. That's great. That's something actually I've been thinking about for a lot of other gotcha games where it's very difficult to know, you know, if I invest in this type of team or this character, whether that's worthwhile. So it would be great for us all to kind of test out meta um, around different game modes and that sort of thing. Mobius Dungeon, I'm probably not going to be um, anywhere near kind of close to doing that yet, but the fact that you create your own dungeon, again, it's all this kind of random generated content um, that keeps things fresh, and we all know things tend to stick around. I mean, have a look at Diablo, for example. Diablo was such a great um, repeatable uh, experience because it created a, a different dungeon every time you kind of went down there, which is really, really cool. Um, so getting air practice um, battles is really nice. Collaborations, that's always good to see as well. Kind of gives uh, some freshness to the game, um, brings some of that kind of valuable IP that perhaps other games have over a loon, which is really good. Um, might add more, get more fan base to the game, which I think is something they're really struggling to do at the moment um, in terms of growing the player base. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but as you can see here as well, now they're starting to give us glimpses into November and December plans as well, which is even further out. And I think that's a really good thing. And why I think that's a good thing is because it gives something for the community to kind of get hyped about, but it doesn't force um, this content to be delivered anytime soon. So it's giving a, a few more months, starting to stretch that expectation out with the community and making sure that, yes, we can get excited about stuff. They're giving us a sneak peek and a view into things, but they don't have to deliver it tomorrow which I think is something that uh, they'll continue to, Gameville will continue to kind of stretch that out and um, eventually the, the pace will become more of a maintenance sort of pace, which will be good. Because uh, and the main reason why I say that it'll be good is because I think that, you know, I wouldn't say that I'm a casual player, probably a little bit above casual, but to get that growing player base, you want to be able to appeal to a lot of different types of players. And I think... Um, when you're sort of throwing content content out there frequently, you know, every week, every couple of weeks, it can get extremely overwhelming and very, you know, burnout really does set in when you, you know, every week you're almost feeling like you've catch, you know, catching up um, and you're starting to get into a bit of a rhythm with the game and then all of a sudden there's all this new content you're nowhere near prepared to do. So I think that's a good thing. Now, um, one of the only other things I had in terms of concerns around what they were proposing is bringing all this real-time content into the game is likely going to introduce quite a few bugs and issues. Um, so definitely not something that they want to rush into doing. And, you know, we've, we're in October now, so looking forward into a couple of months, I really hope that they've spent uh, time early on starting to work on that. Um, and I know that they have made some uh, comments around that, that they've been already working on it since um, early in the release of the game, which is good. 
Um, but definitely something to watch out for. Um, has plagued other games before where they've tried to introduce uh, too much co-op type content or complex um, networking and matchup type systems, which has you know really overwhelmed the platform and um, not really given the users a very good experience. So I think it'll be really, really something to watch and really um, something to be mindful of and careful of from a Gameville's perspective that they'll be looking ashore to be sure that this is a sort of rock solid before releasing it. And then right out into season two update in January as well. Absolutely amazing they're giving this much insight into the, the roadmap out past Christmas. Um, adding all these different dimensions, that's great. I mean, it's very easy to sort of say we're going to add new dimensions. So um, it's probably a little bit premature to sort of release inf this information now. But look, you know, it, it gives us an insight into where they're taking the game and it all makes sense. So I have no problem with that whatsoever um, as long as, you know, they do um, they do sort of meet the expectations and slowly kind of change how the community is perceiving the game. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope you are having fun with the game. Um, I hope you're working on trying to pull Karu or waiting for the other legendaries to drop. Um, I know I am. So uh, I just wanted to kind of touch on a few points there and uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if you think the game's got a good pace of content releasing, whether you think it's kind of, you know, like I do, sort of close to almost getting to a burnout stage. Um, but yeah, I'm interested in what you're thinking. So uh, let me know in the comments below. If you like this content, let me know. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. I'm posting three to four times a week, so always something for everyone. New stuff, old stuff, a loon, overheat, etc. Um, so yeah, always, uh, always something coming out from me each week um, that you might be interested in. If you don't like it, please let me know too. Always looking to improve. So thank you for your feedback. It is very valuable. And anyway, guys, that's it from me. If it's nighttime or daytime, I hope you're having a great evening or a great day. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. This is Andy, signing off. Bye.